three of Barclays' most senior executives now gone. It's one of the world's biggest banks falling apart over this. Uh, is it now pretty rudderless at a vital time? It's not just the corruptly gained profits at Barclays and 16 banks in the US, in the UK and the USA. It's not just the totally false picture that's been given of the condition of banks when they're basically zombie banks. And it's not just the fact that nearly a thousand trillion, that's perhaps 15 or 20 times the worth of the global economy, a thousand uh, trillion uh, of contracts have all been falsified. The seriousness about this is that this latest revelation uh, is part of showing that the whole system, which is arrogantly stated to be always efficient and always having just outcomes, is in fact false and failing. The banks must firstly be controlled, and that can be done by insisting that they lend only their own money and with permission the deposits of their customers. And having done that, you open up an interest-free supply of money from the national bank, which may be administered by the commercial banks, charging only an administration cost. But it must be administered on two key conditions, that it only goes to the real economy and not into the casino and the gambling, and it's only for the spreading of the real economy. Now, if you do that, you can, in fact, start to correct what is now, alas, the collapse of the Western financial and economic system, of which the Barclays story is only a part. Right. You're proposing a solution, but what about the crimes that have already been committed? What's your sense about how endemic the banking culture of profits and bonuses come first, customers come second in the UK? I mean, people are outraged. In the early 1990s, in the savings and loan crisis in the USA, 1,000, 2,000 people were imprisoned. This is a much larger scale, and minds have to be focused. And they must be focused around a criminal charge, conspiracy to defraud. And they should, in fact, be imprisoned. So it's not just a question of sacking, but they're all of them complicit. Uh, people don't realize that the politicians are complicit, complicit because they think that the existing system only needs a few tweaks and a few corrections. But that's not so. They're all in it together, but of course you have to hit at those that you can pin with a criminal charge. And that can be done through the charge of conspiracy to defraud. Right, but I think the question many people will be asking is, will it be done? Uh, the problem is, is, at the moment, is no. I mean, there's outrage because, you see, it's not just Barclays and Bob Diamond and his chairman. It's the consequences in everyday life, which is at the moment the system and its corrections are putting money into this, these uh, zombie banks down a black hole. And the money is not going into public capital works, into clean electricity generation, uh, into um, small businesses which have collateral, uh, into student free, uh, student loans, it's interest free. Forward. It's not going into housing, which should be interest free. As a result of all this, Employment is collapsing, not just in the UK, but right the way throughout Europe. And this is in the same as in, in the United States of America. So you see, there must be penalties. There has to be a new paradigm of thinking. And frankly, the whole lot ought to be cleared out and we have to start again. But you can't do that. But what I propose is, in fact, a method by which you can alter it for new paradigm thinking in a very fundamental way. But I'm afraid if you don't do this, this is going on for 15 or 20 years of a depression which will be worse than that of the 1930s. Mr. Shakespeare, how embroiled do you think the Bank of England and the Treasury are in this? You talked about, uh, the complic uh, the, about politicians. What about the banks and the Treasury? Yes. I cannot comment on what will be revealed as the content between Bob Diamond and, shall we say, someone in the Bank of England. But the Bank of England, I know from correspondence I've had in the past and from asking questions, the Bank of England thinks that the existing system is efficient and all its outcomes are just. And there's just a few bit of trouble here and a bit of few trouble there. The Bank of England should be the source of an interest-free loan supply 
the money to be put out and taken back and cancelled for the real economy and its spreading. But all the governors of the Bank of England so far have always sneered at that and have said, oh, there's nothing wrong with the existing system. Well, I say to the existing uh, governor, Mervyn King, alas, uh, I can say he's a little bit better than his predecessor. I say to him, you're better wake up to this because it's a very serious matter. Your job is on the line. And I think at the end of the day that the politicians' jobs should be on the line because they also think they're smug, uh, self-righteous and complacent. And they, none of them accept that the system is fundamentally flawed, that debt has, has got to levels which are totally unrepayable, and that something very radical and fundamental must be done. Right. Economics professor Rodney Shakespeare talking to us live from London. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you.